Now I'm going to be talking about the approach hold. I won't be teaching you exactly how to perform an ILS landing, that's what my ILS landing tutorial is for, but I will be expanding a little bit on the functions of the approach hold to clear up some confusion that some of you might have after watching my tutorial. The approach hold basically tunes your plane uh, into the localizer and glide slope components of the ILS system. The localizer provides your plane with horizontal guidance. So basically, it turns your plane to the correct heading that will lead it straight to the runway. The glide slope provides your plane with the correct uh, vertical speed or slope that will lead your plane directly to the runway. Now, I still have my nav GPS switch on GPS from uh, the last thing I showed you guys. So you want to switch it back to nav. Now, the localizer and the glide slope components work together and they use one frequency, so you only need one ILS frequency. So how do you get this frequency? Well, you can get it from the map, and I show you how to do that in my ILS tutorial. So I'm going to show you guys a different way to do it, uh, but it gives you the same thing. So I'm going to teach you guys how to um, get the ILS frequency using the GPS. So let's open it up. You want to click on the upper set of arrows, the right one. That brings you to this page. You want to click on the center button, which highlights the code. You want to click on the lower set of arrows, the right one. That highlights the first letter. This allows you to type using your keyboard. So we're going to type uh, Kilo Sierra Echo Alpha. And that will give us Seattle Tacoma International Airport. We want to hit Enter which highlights it, hit enter again. Now nothing is highlighted. Now we want to click on the lower set of arrows and it brings us these pages of information about Seattle Tacoma. We want to come to this page with the frequencies. You want to click the center button that highlights the code on the top. Clicking the lower set of arrows, or excuse me, sorry, clicking the upper set of arrows brings you down to the main box and now now you can use a lower set of arrows to or excuse me you're still using the upper set of arrows <laughs> uh, these um, these uh, three buttons right here are really confusing sometimes and uh, you just, so you just keep using these arrows to move down to the ILS frequencies we're going to be using 16 left so we want to get this frequency, 110.30. We uh, close the GPS, open up the radio stack, go to Nav1 Standby, choose 110.30. We want to switch it to the active. To do that, we must press this button in the center. Now what you want to do is you want to go down here and you want to click on nav1 which is the same place we just put in the ILS frequency and what this does is that when we are in range of the localizer we will hear a Morse code that corresponds just to that localizer you can verify the Morse code in the map so right now as you can see VOR1 is blank and there's no Morse code we are not in range of the localizer yet Okay, we've intercepted the localizer. As you can see right here, DME says we are 25.8 nautical miles. And there's the Morse code. So we've intercepted the localizer, but not the glide slope. We know we've intercepted the localizer because we can see right here VOR DME. And if you have the flight director on, you'll see that we only have one diamond telling us to go to the left which makes sense because the localizer provides us with uh, horizontal directions. The glide slope provides vertical and we have not intercepted that yet. Because of this, we want to turn on nav hold. Now I know what you're thinking. I thought we were doing approach hold. That's correct. But since we have not yet intercepted the glide slope, we can't turn on approach hold because 
approach hold looks for horizontal and vertical directions and it doesn't have vertical yet and if you press approach hold um, I if the altitude hold is off then there is no uh, there's nothing to tell it where to go as uh, vertically so for right now we want to keep it on nav hold and wait till we intercept the glide slope you'll know it when you have another diamond right here okay we just intercepted the glide slope you can now see that we are below the glide slope because the diamond is up here we also have the below glide slope light now it is safe to turn on approach hold now because we are below the glide slope the altitude hold remains on because if you turn that altitude hold off nothing will be controlling your altitude so you must keep that on until that pink diamond falls below uh, level of flight so there it is it's falling once that pink diamond reaches the center the altitude hold should be disabled and the plane should start descending watch carefully okay our altitude hole has been disabled and we are now descending and that is basically how to use the approach hold and I basically just taught you um, how to do an eyeless landing as well and that concludes my tutorial on autopilot functions if you want to learn more about ILS landings uh, I suggest you check out my basic but complete ILS landing tutorial um, hopefully this video cleared up uh, some things about uh, the autopilot functions and maybe about the approach hold I know some of you have been a little bit confused about that after watching my ILS tutorial so hopefully that I cleared up some things and again I am not a real pilot so I cannot guarantee that everything is done 100 percent correctly um, again thanks for watching and um, we'll see you later